Journey into comics. Poor entertainment. Poor news. Foodies watching movies. Adults and gaming. Podcast read the voice of survival. Kids for sale. Gallif Radio. Brews with dudes. Journey into wrestling. Journey into comics network. Journeyintocomics.com. The following, following. the following is a journey into comics. Journey into comics. It's a journey into comics. It's a journey into comics. Journey into comics. Journey into comics. Network. 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 Production. Production. This is Liz Sturba, co-host of Adulting Ain't Easy, and you're listening to Journey into Comics Best of the Week. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Journey into they dropped on Netflix Avengers Infinity War. Uh, the entire description for this saying that, let's see, where is the actual description? Uh, the entire description said, Superheroes amass to stop intergalactic sociopath Thanos from acquiring, acquiring a full set of Infinity Stones and wiping out half of all life in the universe. And then it lists people that are in the cast. So, it's pretty cool that they were going to plan to release this. However, there was some controversy because there were half, almost, of Netflix users saying they could not find the the the, the movie streaming on Netflix. It didn't exist. Uh, now, some people could not find it maybe because they weren't searching right. They searched and maybe the search parameters weren't correct on Infinity War at the time because it was still uploading. and Whatever the reason was, people couldn't find it. They thought they had been snapped. I mean, half of Netflix users complaining that they can't find Infinity War on the streaming service. You got to wonder, did Thanos snap? No, that's not the case. Like I said, it's a bunch of other stuff. And including that the people that were not in the USA, let's just mention... The people that aren't in the USA weren't going to get it anyways on Christmas. That's the whole point. Uh, That was not the plan. They hadn't planned to roll this out internationally. So people who were international are like, I don't have Infinity War. And they're like, no shit. We did not put that on the fucking streaming service for you. So uh, to me, it's weird because go out and buy the fucking movie. If you want to see Infinity War that badly... Just go buy the film and watch it. Stop bitching at Netflix because you're not in the right country. One way or another, they're going to get your money. Either you're going to pay Netflix to see the movie, you're going to pay a theater to see the movie, or you can just own the movie and then fucking own the movie. And guess what? If it goes off Netflix, you still have the movie. If fucking they stop putting it on um, fucking, what do they call that, on demand on like Xfinity and shit, you'll still have your movie. I don't understand why people have forgotten the art of purchasing film and CDs. Jesus Christ, this digital age is horse shit. To return to the the digital age of horse shit. Yeah. So anyways, uh, Netflix kind of had a funny response and said, uh, sorry, non-US pals, this is Netflix USA in particular that's going to be having uh, Infinity War. Uh, Don't want anyone to feel snapped. Which, of course, like I said, it was funny that people were assuming they had been snapped. Now, one thing to note is that Kevin Feige sat down and did some sort of podcast. I think it was like Variety's playback podcast and was talking about the long-term planning for him, for Marvel's Cinematic Universe, for everything moving forward out of 2019 and what happens from Avengers Endgame and beyond. All the things that connect and what happens with Kevin Feige moving forward. So... Uh, let's just read this little article here. Uh, Variety was talking with Kevin Feige, and Feige says the X-Men and Fantastic Four-based properties could enter the development early next year, saying right now they are not in development, but we've been told it's looking very, very good and could happen in the first six months of next year. I have a follow-up to this part of his uh, conversation really quickly because he says the deal could happen Uh, or could finish up in the first six months of next year, let's get a a report, an update report on that, as industry insiders and executives are expecting that the deal will be closed and finalized the final week, essentially the end of uh, the fourth quarter of 2018, um, or I guess that's the first fiscal quarter of 2019, my bad. Uh, It would be the end of the first fiscal month, uh, 
they will be seeing. Let's see. It says, according to industry insiders, executives are expecting a deal will close and be finalized in the last week of January 2019. The news came along with word of a potential blackout of Disney programs with Verizon's FIO service, which they came to terms with recently. Uh, so that is going to change things, too. It seems like we are fast-tracking to the Disney and Fox deal being complete. Everything is being in place. All the deals they need to make to move this along faster, they've made. Any of the changes the courts have said you need to do, dissolving certain parts of the company and changing things and giving up ownership rights to certain other aspects in the deal, Disney has done it without question. They play no bullshit. They want their properties. That is at the heart. Listen, it's great to acquire Fox. Fox, we acquired them, yay. The Murdochs don't own, oh, I guess they still do own Fox News, and that's fucking terrifying. Anyways, so, like, that's great and all, and the things that came with Fox are great and all. However, getting the X-Men, getting the Fantastic Four back under the roof of Marvel... Think about how Marvel has done on these other movies, right? We've let they've they've shown us Doctor Strange, right? They've shown us Thor, right? They've showed us the Guardians correctly. We've seen the Avengers come together and and do all the things they've done. We are on the cusp of getting this even bigger world where we can do even more things. And with that, see, it's like this great question: Do you immediately go, "Well, we have the X Men and the Fantastic Four, let's make movies," or do you go, "Why don't we play long ball here and develop?" teams that can get into eventually have big movies where we can really interconnect one thing i think marvel and disney were smart about with the talking about netflix and some things happening you know you've seen a lot of the shows have been canceled no daredevil no iron fist no luke cage we're still jury still out on jessica jones jury is still out on punisher obviously we're not getting the defenders so what does that mean I think it means that this is what's happening. Kevin Feige goes on to talk about Disney Plus and saying Disney Plus happens to be an exciting part of Hollywood Studios' future offerings. He says Disney Plus is yes, um, which is another exciting avenue and another exciting thing about being in the place at this time and going goes back to the amount of characters we have and the amount of stories we could tell. He also mentions that they've only been limited to three films a year because of Disney's massive, ever-growing film slate. With Disney+, Plus, however, the options are endless for Marvel Studios to pump out their original content for the MCU. When we announced 10 movies and people asked, what about all those other things? Um, only a certain number of slots to make movies per year. That's still true, but we have another outline I think would be very unique and very special. Obviously, Loki is going to be confirmed for the thing, as is Vision and Scarlet Witch. It also appears that they have pitched a Rocket, Raccoon, and Groot series that might happen and debut in 2019 here. So it seems like they're going for the gold here, folks. Disney and Fox deal coming to a close, coupling that with Disney+. Plus. Honestly, Disney Plus is going to be an add-on for Hulu as well. They're going to make that an option like $4.99 and just add Disney Plus to your Hulu, and every motherfucker is going to do it under the sun. They could do it for $10.99, and people would still probably buy it. And what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is there are certain um, certain apps or certain like uh, your PS4 or your 360 or whatever the fuck, your, your, your streaming devices, some of them, you know, can't handle... Uh, un, like new apps, like Roku's are old. They can't handle getting a bunch of new apps, so Disney Plus is going to miss a market. But they don't have to because they can, much like uh, Showtime, I think Stars, HBO did it as well. They can literally just, since they own Hulu, they can literally just chain themselves together to Hulu and make them simpatico and offer them as one thing, and people will buy. No, I'm signed up. No commercials, Disney Plus and Hulu for twenty nine twenty like nineteen ninety nine a month, let's say twenty bucks, right? I am fucking there, man. I get all the Disney stuff. I'm gonna get all the Marvel stuff, I'm gonna get all the Star Wars stuff, I'm gonna get all the Fox stuff. I'm also gonna get Hulu and all the shit that's on there. Yeah, you got no questions from me. That's what's gonna happen. I hope, hope, hope that is what actually comes to light. Uh, yeah, so they, you know, they do tease and talk about how that hopefully next year they can start, uh, developing these X-Men. I think it'd be dope. I know Legion is good and whatnot, but I really think it would be great 
to see X-Men in long form, okay? So let's go twofold. You guys are going to hear this again later because I'm going to give you guys two different options. You have one option now. You'll have one option later. You can decide which adventure you choose. I guess I'm I'm guessing I know the answer to this. So here's the deal. On December 31st, that's today if you're listening, if you start Avengers Infinity War at 948 in 54 seconds p.m., the snap will happen exactly at midnight, and you get to ring in the new year by crying your little eyes out. Uh, I think that would be cool to watch uh, Infinity War and have the snap happen right at a Happy New Year. And then it's like uh, you hear the thunder and people start to fucking Steve. Uh, just fucking gone. Uh Here's some uh, more Kevin Feige stuff. Kevin Feige also addressed this question, and people, I guess, may be fearful. You do something for 10 years, and you can immediately think, shit, maybe I need to go try something else. I've, I've tried my hand at doing Marvel really well. What if I go do the Star Wars universe really well? So Kevin Feige, again, talking on the Variety Podcast uh, playback, said... Uh, I'm an antsy person, I've said before. I don't like to sit at a desk. We're in my office now, and I almost never sit at that desk. I like to jump around, I like to move around. So even thinking, oh, right, I've been in this same space for 18 years. Well, I guess theoretically, yes, but in actuality, no. It's been very different companies, at least three of the four incarnations of this company since I've been here. This current incarnation is pretty great. He goes on to praise his current position at Marvel and the working relationship he has with higher-ups at Disney. He says, The people I work with at Marvel Studios are great. The people I work for at the Walt Disney Studios are incredible and the best mentors I've ever had in this business. Working at this studio at this time is pretty satisfying, and I like to make a lot of different types of movies, and these characters, as you've seen in 22 movies, provide a way to do a lots of different films. He goes on to say people can lump them together. Superhero movies or comic book movies, but to us, they're movies. And to us, we think, what kind of stories do we want? Or what kind of stories haven't we done? What kind of movies do we like that we haven't gotten to do yet? And then we decide to make, or then we decide what to make. We're very lucky to be in that position. There's a, another thing that Kevin Feige goes on to say in this thing that's really good. He talks about diversity. Someone asking, is Black Panther going to encourage the studio to stay on the path that they've always wanted to go on? Feige elaborating, saying, yes, absolutely. Sometimes people have to ask very directly, is Black Panther a one-off? In terms of inclusion and representation, the answer is no. It's the beginning. Uh, that it worked out so well and it has worked out just encourages to... Uh, it just encourages us to head in the direction that we were going to head anyways. You look at that film and the experience of the film, and it was incredible. That movie, obviously, would not have been what it was if everyone sitting around the table looked at me or you. Uh, and that's actually true for all the movies. Oh, If everyone sitting around the table looked like me or you, and that's actually true for all the movies. He goes on to explain that uh, the production team at Marvel is nearly split down the middle, being made equally part men and female. As Marvel Studios has grown as has our collective team has grown. It's the same thing. It's almost half men, half women now. We try to grow and promote in-house. Almost anybody that worked around me uh, has worked here for many, many years, and people going on the uh, going on the produce some of our films came in between people producing the films now. When you have diverse voices, you get better stories, and you get more exciting stories, and you get more surprising stories, and that is something very, very clear to us. Man, Kevin Feige, a man of uh, sometimes few words and then also a man of very many important words. Uh, one last thing he mentions. He says, uh, the only thing that we can officially announce after Avengers Endgame is the Spider-Man Far From Home movie that we're working on. There are other things in development. There are other filmmakers, including the Eternals director and Black Widow directors, who are working on things in development. But when and where and how and why we haven't discussed yet. But it is fair to say that we will continue making films after Endgame and Spider-Man Far From Home. He didn't officially name drop Eternals or Black Widow. Um, they were just saying them and he was like nodding. Yeah. Uh, the way we do it is sort of the way we've done it up to now in unexpected ways. Continue to bring characters to the screen you've not seen before while at the same time seeing the new stories and new ways of the heroes you already know. Uh, I'm looking forward to the future of Marvel, obviously. I'm a big fan, boy. Don't you guys know? Haven't you figured it out? Here's something that bums me out, though. As a fanboy of Marvel, as a fanboy of DC, as a fanboy of comic books in general, as a fanboy of the medium of telling stories about heroes, people who are extraordinarily doesn't necessarily mean they're superheroes. 
Rick Grimes to me is a hero, a superhero at that. But he is not a superhero, if that makes sense. But here's some shitty shit. For one Las Vegas man, supervillains don't just exist on the pages of comic books. They exist in real life as well, and one is responsible for the theft of $100,000 worth of comic books. According to News 3 Las Vegas, two suspects broke into Daniel Ballard's storage uh, life storage unit on Thursday, December 27th, and stole 12 boxes of comic books, totaling around 3,000 individual books, including several valuable issues. The crown jewel of it was the amazing Spider-Man. You guys... I had the entire run 1 to 170, Volume 1 and 2, and I had a lot of other issues. First appearance of Venom, Death of Captain Stacy, the first appearance of the Punisher. It wasn't just his personal collection that was stolen. Some of them belonged to a charity that he worked with, Critical Care Comics. The charity delivers comics to children in hospitals. I felt like such a dork because I'm a grown man crying over comics, but the whole theft brought me to tears. You're listening to Poor Entertainment! With your host, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andrew Paul. Probably one of the biggest thing is me as a movie buff. If you've heard me on uh, Foodies Watching Movies, you've heard the other guys. I'm a big movie fan. I have a large movie collection. I see movies all the time. It's not any given month that I see at least one, two, three, four, five. It really can go... I've gone from seeing... I do double features now. Since I became a part of the... AMC A list, which is if you're um, for like twenty bucks a month through the through a, you can see up to three movies a week at, of any format in the AMC theaters. So since that's happened, I've done double features. I was taking advantage of Movie Pass till Movie Pass became a raging dumpster fire. So this is kind of what I've been doing since then, and I've taken advantage. The last movie I did see was Mortal Engines, which is based on a book series, which is really imaginative new post-apocalyptic movie that I kind of enjoyed. I wasn't expecting to like it. I probably wouldn't have gone see it if it wasn't for one of my friends who's a pretty diehard fan for it. So, yeah, it's not been too bad. I enjoyed that. Uh, the other movie I really recently watched was just last night, which was Bird Box, which is this movie that's been blowing up Netflix, and it's been raising all these flags, or not flags, raising, making all this news and memes on Facebook and all that about how many views it had, how it's probably the most viewed movie on Netflix up to this point, and really kicking start theirs. And now you see there's all these other award contenders coming out of Netflix, like Roma, and... Well, that's the big one, Roma. That We'll get to talk to that later when I talk about a lot of the forthcoming awards that we're going to expect in 2019 for a lot of movies that I have seen, and movies that I still want to see in the 2019 or the 2018-2019 film season. But uh, with that, I will jump into what I wanted to talk about today, and that is the nominations for the two biggest award contenders, well, two of the three big award contenders since the other one hasn't really been revealed yet, but I'll talk about the short lists before I get out of here. And that's talking about the Golden Globes, the SAG Awards, and the Academy Awards, the three biggest award shows that, the ones that people talk about, like obviously there are Critics' Choice Awards, and there's a lot of those smaller awards producers, directors, get all of that. But those are the ones that people tune in to see. These are the ones that are on TV that they really care about who the host is, all that. But the last thing I'd really cover it before was the 2019 Golden Globe nomination. So these are the nominations for the films. The awards are going to be January 6th, which will actually be this coming weekend. So I may have to talk about that next week, or at least on the next Porn Entertainment, if Porn Entertainment falls, or if the Porn Entertainment Week falls before the government resumes, so if it's still going in two weeks, then yeah, there'll be that. If not, it'll definitely be a small part of the new show, so with that, actually, uh, the hosts will be Sandra O oh and Andy Samberg, so if you're a fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, if you're a fan of SNL, Andy Samberg, and then Sandra O oh was on Grey's Anatomy for his whole run, or up until recently, and now she was on that show Killing Eve, which is, if you're a Hulu subscriber, you've seen the commercials for it. Where they play that song like, I want to kill you, which is really creepy. But I watched a little clip of them presenting a war together and it looks like they'll probably do a good job. But I'll have comments on that after January 6th. But jumping right in, these are the nominations. I'm going to list them in no particular order. It actually looks like it might be a little alphabetical. And it looks like these are, um, 
I watched both the nominations for the Golden Globes uh, while I was at work. I actually had it on this my second screen, just seeing how the nominations were rolling in. Golden Globes famously cover both uh, movies and TV, so there'll be a little bit of both those awards talk here, mainly focusing on the movies, but so be it. Um, here's the nomination for Best Motion Picture Drama. That is Black Panther, Black Klansman, Bohemian Rhapsody, If Beale Street Could Talk, and A Star is Born. And I've seen four of these five films. Black Panther, which is the first time a superhero film has been nominated for a Best Motion Picture. So that's exciting. Um, Best Picture Drama. Uh, I believe Deadpool got nominated for Comedy last year, or whatever year that Deadpool came out, or at least Ryan Reynolds got nominated for his role. Uh, the one I haven't seen is If Beale Street Could Talk. So... I don't know much about it. I know it's uh, a follow-up to Moonlight, which won famously won the Academy Award two years ago. So and that was the whole snafu about the La La Land was revealed as the winner, and it turns out that the um, Warren Beatty misread and then faked on away. Yeah, that whole thing. Um, but Black Klansman's a great movie. Um, I really enjoy that. It's a pretty intense movie. Bohemian Rhapsody, which is the Queen's biopic which is really good uh and a star is born which is a remake starring bradley cooper and lady gaga and it was directed by bradley cooper so definitely very powerful Some of those songs are great and i would be shocked if we didn't get a uh at least that's the winner the win for this first song then we're going on to best actress in a motion picture drama and that is glenn close for the wife lady gaga for a star is born nicole kidman for destroyer melissa mccarthy for can you ever forgive me and rosamund pike for a private war now, Melissa McCarthy is famous for doing these comedy films like Tammy and Bridesmaids and all that. This is her first big dramatic turn, and I've heard good things about it. I've seen, the one I've seen is Lady Gaga's performance in A Star is Born, which is good. She looks nothing like herself and kind of evolves into a Lady Gaga type character towards the end, but it's still very subdued compared to her stage personality. So, But I can't say anything about those other films, so I'll really move forward. In Best Actor in a Motion Picture Drama, we have Bradley Cooper for A Star is Born, Willem Dafoe for At Eternity's Gate, Lucas Hedges for Boy Erased, Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody, and John David Washington for Black Klansman. And I've seen three of these movies, and I know of the other actors. Like, I don't know of all these actors. Bradley Cooper's performance is great. He really does change like he did. He's changed a lot in films he's done since his supporting days in like hangover and a lot of those other like a team and those other kind of comedy action movies and he's doing a good job um willem dafoe was great um this is him playing um now i'm blanking on the artist van gogh um lucas hedges i never saw boy erased but i've seen him in movies and uh in the past with like a manchester by the sea uh what else did he do? He did Manchester of the Sea. He did um, Lady Bird. He's done some other films. Uh, he's definitely one of the great... I could see him being a Leonardo DiCaprio type person in the future. So definitely wishing him all the luck. Um, Ami Malek looks uncanny like Freddie Mercury in this. People know him from Mr. Robot, but... And then John David Washington, he's a relatively new actor, but he's actually Denzel Washington's son. So he's following the family business, does a great job in Black Klansmen. It's not like one of those, like, your dad is famous, so you get a role in the movie, like uh, Will Smith's kid in the Karate Kid remake. It's kind of its own thing. Um, then we have the best motion picture, musical or comedy, which was Crazy Rich Asians, The Favorite, Green Book, Mary Poppins Returns, and Vice. I've only seen one of these. I saw Crazy Rich Asians, which was actually really good. It I don't know. I wouldn't quite call it a comedy. I would say it's more of a drama with a few comedy elements. Heard good things about The Favorite and Green Book. And I haven't had a chance to see Mary Poppins Returns or Vice because they both came out right around the wedding. I think one or both of them came out like on Christmas Day, so I just haven't had the time to see it. Mary Poppins Returns is obviously a sequel to the original with Emily Blunt as Mary Poppins. And they have Lin-Manuel Miranda of Hamilton fame in that as well. Then Vice is... Christian Bale with another big physical transformation into Dick Cheney, and you have Sam Rockwell as George W. Bush, and um, 
Steve Carell is uh, Donald Rumsfeld, so it's just definitely a stellar cast, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest of that. Uh, then you have Best Actress in a Motion Picture, Musical, or Comedy. You have Emily Blunt for Mary Poppins Returns, Olivia Coleman for The Favorite, Elsie Fisher for 8th Grade, Charlie Theron for Tully, and Constance Wu for Crazy Rich Asians. Now, um, Emily Blunt looks looks good as Mary Poppins. I haven't seen the movies, I can't comment on that. I've not seen The Favorite. Elsie Fisher in 8th Grade. 8th Grade it's, itself is a great movie. If you remember it all being in middle school... Watching that movie will give you anxiety if you're like, oh my gosh, I remember all of this, all these situations. And it's directed by Bo Burnham, who used to make the YouTube videos and the songs and the stand-up and all that. Does a great job in this. I think he should get first-time director for this movie. Elsie Fisher is great. She was, you couldn't tell if she was playing herself or if she was playing a different character altogether, but so good in that performance. Constance and Crazy Rich Asians was great. Uh, I haven't seen Charlie Theron and Tully. <coughs> Excuse me. But, yeah, really, to get up there. And then we have Best Actor, Christian Bale in Vice, which I wouldn't be surprised if he's a shoe in We saw Gary Oldman's big transformation for uh, Darkest Hour. A Liminal Miranda for Mary Poppins Returns. We'll see if that works out. Viggo Mortensen for Green Book. Uh, Robert Redford, The Old Man of the Gun, and John C. Riley for Sandali. I don't know if it's going to hurt or help. Uh, John C. Riley, he's in two very different movies this year. Stan and Ollie, where he plays, uh, well, it's about, uh, Stan Laurel and, uh, Oliver Hardy. Like, uh, Laurel and Hardy, the black and white kind of comedic duo. And he's also in this movie, Holmes and Watson, right now, where he's playing, uh, Dr. Watson. One's a very serious drama, one's a pretty slapstick comedy, so... I don't know if it's going to help him. I heard he does a really good job in this movie. I haven't had a chance to see it. It didn't really come through the theaters here. Um, yeah, It's just been a hard season to really see all the movies that I want to see. So, But I definitely got to catch up with these. And I know Liz and I will do the Best Picture Showcase in the next month or two. Which will give us a chance to see a lot more of this. So yeah, we'll have to see how the rest of this shakes out. Um, Moving down the line here, we have Best Actress in a Supporting Role in Any Motion Picture. We have Amy Adams for Vice, Claire Foy for First Man, Regina King for A Bill She Could Talk, Emma Stone for The Favorite, and Rachel Weisz for The Favorite. Obviously, I haven't seen The Favorite, but it looks like we have uh, all of the characters from The Favorite, the main characters, are getting nominations, so it's got to be a pretty good movie. It looks weird to me. I know it's... uh, uh, an interesting stelling of a uh, a royal story, so it looks kind of laid out. Uh, or Amy Adams, great advice. Haven't seen it. Claire Foy was pretty good in First Man. First Man, the story of um, Neil Armstrong and that whole uh, first moon mission and all the leading up and all the big events that broke news in the mid to late sixties. So, kind of all I have to say about that. Best actor in a supporting role in any motion picture: we have Mahershala Ali for Green Book. Timothy Chalamet for Beautiful Boy, Adam Driver for Black Klansman, Richard E. Grant for Can You Ever Forgive Me, and Sam Rockwell for Vice. Really, I've only seen Black Klansman. Adam Driver did a great in that role. Um, he's Adam Driver being someone I didn't really care about. Didn't really know he didn't really get on anyone's big radar until Star Wars. Um, Timothy Chalamet, I liked him in last year in. Um, I can't remember the name of that movie, but I think it was, I'm, I'm really blank on the name right now. I'd have to look it up, but, uh, I've heard good things about all of those films. I just haven't really had a chance to see them. Um, hopefully I'll be able to see them before that. If not, some of these will get nominated for best picture. I'll be able to see them in the best picture showcase. Uh, best picture animated was Incredibles 2, Isle of Dogs, Mirai, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. So... It's the only scene in Incredibles 2 and Spider-Man. Both of those movies are really good. Uh, Incredibles 2, obviously the sequel to the original that came out when we were all much younger. It was like 14 years ago, I think, was when it came out, or 15. It's been quite a while, but still looked like it was cut from the page of the original. Kept the same animated style, despite all the improvements. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was groundbreaking. I think if Sony can make more movies like that, I think we're in good hands. I think maybe keeping Miles Morales in that world in animation as opposed to live action I think will make a lot of people happy and I think it will allow them to go in different areas 
So we'll kind of see the rest of that shakes out. I never saw Rob Wick's internet. It kind of came out at a bad time. I Love Dogs. I know it was a Wes Anderson movie. Just missed it. And I have no idea what Mariah is. Um, foreign language film. Best motion picture. We have Capernaum, Girl, Never Look Away, Roma, and Shoplifters. Roma's on Netflix. I heard it's getting a lot of buzz. People are saying it could be a best picture contender and not just an animated or a foreign language film. So we'll have to see. It's black and white. It was filmed in Mexico. Alfonso Cuaron, who did Gravity. He's also did the third Harry Potter film, which is arguably one of the better of the eight. So definitely worth checking out. I mean, it's on Netflix. You're already paying for it. You could watch it any time. They're definitely giving, Netflix definitely giving a good push for it. Just like Bird Box is breaking all the records, Roma is definitely making a lot of critics happy. We have Best Director, which is Bradley Cooper for A Star is More, and Alfonso Cuaron for Roma, like I just said. Peter Farrelly for Green Book, Spike Lee for Black Klansman, and Adam McKay for Vice. Uh, all these guys have been here before. Well, Bradley Cooper's a new director, so he's but he's done great with that movie. Alfonso Cuaron, like I said, was doing great. Peter Farrelly's or Peter Farrelly has done a lot, mostly silly comedies before this. Green Book's apparently really good. Spike Lee is Spike Lee. There's really not much else to say there. Adam McKay did Spotlight. Do I have everybody's attention now? All Elite Wrestling is here. Double or nothing. Uh, they're trying to get something announced here pretty soon. I feel like they've, they're they going to like probably do another major pay-per-view not in the not-too-distant future. Kind of how they did the Chicago All-In. They'll do a secondary pay-per-view elsewhere. And then after that second pay-per-view, they'll really have things solidified for their complete roster and all that. I'm just That's just me speculating. I will say they haven't finalized who the, who the roster is, who's going to be doing what, when, if there's a TV deal, if the TV deal happens, where is it going to be, through who, what's the time slot. Oh, there's literally so many fucking questions that come out of this first bit of news last night. So the Being the Elite episode for New Year's, an elite uh, New Year or whatever, came out. And they all got their phones. They were all in Tokyo and Japan. And when the clock struck midnight and they all looked at their phones and looked at each other. And it was funny. They did the gag where nothing happened. Like, I don't have anything. Nothing's happening. I got this fucking counter for nothing. This is stupid. Like, uh, what the fuck? So then it finally happens. And and everybody but Paige has the, the Double or Nothing logo. And then he goes, I got something different. And it's the All Elite Wrestling logo which looks fucking fantastic so it's really 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 cool to hear that these guys are going to be going on their journey and making their own promotion because listen they put on a hell of a pay-per-view event in all in back in september it's unforgettable it might be i mean to talk about like an event of the year. It might be the best, biggest thing that happened in wrestling in 2018 as far as, uh, I mean, and I mean, there were so many crazy stories that broke going into 2018. We had the Roman Reigns thing, uh, going out with leukemia. We've got the Becky Lynch evolution that is 2018, the return and resurgence of Daniel Bryan and all these other things. But really, 2019 sees the landscape of wrestling seismically shift. Because Cody, the Bucks, all these guys are not just going to be doing this. Oh, it's great. Woohoo. We're doing it for ourselves. They've got friends and they have stakes in this too. You know, and I think it's very interesting to note that there's already word going around that there are WWE superstars that already are eyes locked in place. Um,. Sources saying, I also know some popular WWE wrestlers watching what happens with All Elite Wrestling very closely as they're unhappy creatively and looking for a change of scenery. And man, uh, there is there's some uh, theories I have on who those people might be. We're going to see here in one, one second. But uh, yeah, as noted, the Elite will be holding a double or nothing rally on Tuesday, January 8th in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, more information will be released as it pertains to All In's follow-up pay-per-view and the new promotion uh, next Tuesday, I do believe that is. So look forward to that, guys, and, and I can't wait to see what the official announcements are. You know, it's cool because you, you make an announcement like this and you kind of ghost. 
now the internet's hyped and the the fans we the people are doing all the work for all in and the elite and and that whole crew and anybody that's going to be um going all in as it were because they just set the tone now good wrestling is not something unattainable great wrestling with clever storylines and being able to i mean think about the the elite television show that we have now and how they do that with a slightly higher production value they still have complete control but also seeing behind the scenes of their promotion and shit like it's going to be it's going to be insane now to think about who in the WWE is unhappy who could we see at some point maybe jump ship maybe leave one name that just screams at me loud and proudly is Finn Balor uh former leader of the Bullet Club yeah, he's the first Universal Champ ever. He holds the title the shortest amount of time. The shortest title reign in that title's history is uh, Finn Balor, the Demon King, as he uh, immediately has to relinquish it the following day to, I guess, is maybe maybe that's not true. Because I feel like maybe somebody has been cashed in on. I need to go back and check on that. But, but yeah, let's see. Let's actually look. Let's, let's, let's just look that up now. Uh, shortest... Universal title reign. Bam. Uh, Universal champ. Um, somebody only held... Tw- oh, so it was... It was, in fact, Finn Balor, who only held it for a day, 22 hours to be exact. Um, KO being the second champ, holding it for the second longest reign ever being 188 days behind Brock Lesnar's impressive 503 days. So, uh, of course, he loses that to Roman. So, you got Finn, who's very unhappy with how he has been utilized. He's not gotten back to the echelon that they kind of promised him when he came up from NXT. I mean, you got to think he was the man on NXT, killing it, and then moved up. They were going to crown him, and then he gets hurt. And they've just been hesitant to pull the trigger ever since. And I think that's actually hurting Finn's stock. Meaning, now might be a good time for him to consider jumping ship and going to a new promotion. I mean, who knows what the contracts have or how that's all going to shake out. We will have to wait and see. I could see another guy, someone like Dolph Ziggler, possibly leaving. I mean, I know he is a WWE born and bred boy. However, underutilized. Zack Ryder, another guy underutilized. These guys might not be necessarily what you would expect for all in to pick up as far as talent but there are a lot of people that are unhappy who may be given a different circumstance in an already hyped environment i mean listen zach Ryder has been over and been so over and never been given the push i mean the closest thing was getting the ic title at wrestlemania and that's it i mean that's his benchmark so put him in all elite wrestling let him recreate himself Zacky R or something, you know, like something clever like that. I don't know fucking know, but whatever it may be, I mean, he probably would never leave because again, he's a WWE boy. But you look at it, there, there are Shinsuke Nakamura could possibly leave. He has a great history and past with the Bullet Club and some of those guys. Uh, it'd be interesting to see Cody lure some people from that roster over, and who knows what could happen there. Uh, do we have anything else about the double or nothing? Well, I do want to say, just in case you happen to be in the Jacksonville, Florida area, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time on January 8th, there's a free rally for the fans featuring a featuring a special announcement from the Elite. Now featured on the poster, you've got Cody, the Bucks, Hangman, Page, Brandy, and SoCal Uncensored. Uh, plus more special guests. I'm in StarCast Pro Wrestling teaser on there. Merch and meet and greets to follow, depending on weather event may be moved inside Daily's Place Amphitheater. Live stream of Rally will be announced soon. So they got big stuff for this plan. This is not just a, a privatized thing. We will probably all be watching uh, in the wings and waiting to see what comes from this. So that's really exciting. Now, to talk about things that are also exciting, it is January. January is now like a really special time of year because we don't just have a WWE event that's major and that has some long-term traction in the Royal Rumble. We also have this amazing Wrestle Kingdom card that every year Wrestle Kingdom delivers 
Uh, I started watching them two Wrestle Kingdoms ago at, what was that, uh, 10 or 9? 10, 10 was uh, AJ Shinsuke, so that was the one. And then 11 was um, Omega Alpha, right? Alpha uh, uh, Y2J versus Kenny Omega. Um, so this year we're gonna, we're gonna break it down and we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna, we're gonna break down this card here and run it down for you guys real quick. So in the preliminary match of the evening, a gauntlet match to determine the number one contenders to the never wait open six man tag team champions. We have the most violent players, which is Togi, Makabe, and Toru Yano versus, uh, or to, blah, 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 blah. Togi Makabe and Toru Yano and Ryusuke Taguchi and, versus Yuji Nagata, Jeff Cobb, and David Finley versus Chaos, which is Hiroki Goto, Beretta, and Chucky e. T. Obviously, Trent Beretta, I think, is is who Beretta is. Uh, Suzuki Goon being uh, Minoru Suzuki, Lance Archer, and Davey Boy Smith Jr. versus the Elite Hangman Page, Yurijo, uh Tan. Takahashi and Marty Skrull. So uh, Takahashi joining the elite. Kota Bushi versus Will Ospreay. Singles match for the Never Open Weight Championship. Guarantee you right now. I'm just going to say it here. 11-11 on the 1st of January 2019. A uh, day before you guys are actually listening to this. Or a few short hours here. That Kota Ibushi, Will Ospreay will maybe maybe steal the show on this card. Just look at it. It's a sleeper match that I think has not gotten enough respect. It's definitely one to keep your eyes open. Up next, we got Suzuki Goon, which is Yoshinobu Karamaru and El Desperado versus the K, the 3K show and yo uh, versus the, holy shit, the Los Inglobernals de Japón. Bushi, Shingo, and Tagaki. Takagi. Um, that's a three-way tag team match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship. Up next, fourth match on the card, we've got um, Tomohiro Ishii versus Sack Zaber Jr. It's a singles match for the British Heavyweight Championship. Um, Ishii being champ coming in the gorillas of destiny tama tonga and tana uh tana tanga loa i always fuck that up versus sonata and evil versus the young bucks a three-way tag team match for the iwgp tag team titles here gorillas of destiny coming in as the champs also to note uh, suzuki goon comes in as the champs for that last uh for that three-way tag team match for the junior uh, heavyweight tag team championships. Up next, we got Cody versus Juice Robinson. Singles match for the IWGP United States Championship. Cody is the champ. That's going to be a barn burner of a match as well. Up next, after that, uh, Kushida versus Taiji Ishimori. A singles match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Uh, we've got a... This match is another one that I feel like could steal the show. First of all, you got to give props to to Jay White. He has been since this time last year. We were not really hyped on Jay White and talking about him as much. He has made his way into his version of the Bullet Club. He is now the perennial leader, I guess you would say, of the Bullet Club, and he's making his own thing. Like is, I think that's still true, right? He's currently the leader. Maybe maybe I'm wrong about that. I need to actually look that up. Um, Bullet Club. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. At destruction, he would attack Okada, and he is, yeah. Yeah, so here's the deal. This is the setup, is the actual inception of Jay White joining the Bullet Club was at the, he he did that um, essentially to Okada, and, uh, you know, really did a beautiful little heel turn there defecting from chaos to join the bullet club becoming the new leader and at power struggle uh 
White, Jay White challenged Okada for a match at Wrestle Kingdom 13, which was made official by New Japan Pro Wrestling. So that match is just a straight-up singles match. It looks to be just, honestly, there's nothing on the line more than settling a score, and sometimes that's the best kind of match. I feel like these two are going to have a beautiful chemistry. Okada has an ability to genuinely work anybody, and I don't mean he just gets in there and kind of fucking riffs. He has the ability to find some sort of deeper kinetic chemistry with anyone he works. Uh, he did it with Marty Skrull. He did it uh, with Kenny Omega on several occasions. The Jay White match will probably be no different. I don't see it being any different, especially with it being the uh, the first possible match that they have. If it's great, they might have a series. Who knows? Uh, after that, we've got the champion Chris Jericho, Y2J himself, uh, in a singles match for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. He comes in as champ versus Tetsuya Naito. And, uh, yeah, that's going to, again, great fucking match. Keep your eyes... I, I, this. Let me just reiterate this. The whole card's going to be fucking amazing, and I cannot wait to watch it. It happens in just a few short days here. We're only two days away, folks. This happens this weekend, uh, Saturday the 4th, or Friday the 4th. Saturday the 4th? What day is the 4th? I don't know when the 4th is. We're going to fuck gonna, the sodomites in, in the... In the, in the I want to briefly mention uh, a Christmas gift I got oh, my, yeah. my stepson Maverick. <laughs> uh, we were at Walmart uh, looking for a. We were in Ohio Walmart looking looking for um, a, a Power Ranger toy for him. He, he was looking for a gold Power Ranger from I think like the Samurai or Ninja Power Ranger one, most recent it's whatever. Be Zio. <laughs> I'm all about that Zio. The Zio Gold Ranger, fuck yeah. Fucking bring back Jason. Um, but no, we didn't find any. In fact, they only had one Power Ranger toy in the whole store. Really? One individual toy. Wow. It was just sold out. Um, oh, I, th I thought you were saying that they just didn't have any, like a section. It was just sold out. Wow. Uh, however, I did see this Infinity Gauntlet toy, that, and I was like, I'll get that. Is it like a Hulk hand? But better? I'll get there. Okay. I want to buy this toy. <laughs> uh, it, so I, I figured, okay, I knew, I knew I knew it was just, I thought it was going to be like a whole can. Okay. Because it, it's just a fist. And it's just one. <laughs> and it has a button on it and it lights up and noises and shit. It's only 20 bucks. I was like, okay, I'll get it for him. And uh, I thought. Did he point this out or did you point this I out? I pointed this out. He was not there. Okay, okay. I was searching because this is. Uh, this is post buying switch slash dishwasher. Okay. And uh, I, so we we there's a Walmart right there, and she had at, Miranda had asked me to go look for this gold Power toy. Ranger toy because he he asked for Santa to get it for him. Okay. So we we go on this wild goose chase, didn't find it, but I saw the I, I and I asked her I was like should I get this for him like I think it'd be really cool, so I got it for him, and then he opens it up. <laughs> And I shit you not, it's it's literally a fist that cannot open its hands, which is okay because I figured okay, it's like at least it's kind of like a Hulk hand, mm -hmm. just one individual Hulk hand. Okay. No, it's it's a thing that you there's a there's a little rod in the middle of it mm -hmm. for you to hold on to. Yeah, and that's all it is, and it's bullshit. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it, it's not is it plastic. It's all plastic. Yeah, ish. Okay. It's it's more like rubberized plastic. Seems more like a collector piece. No, not like the actual like Infinity Gauntlet. That's like a hundred bucks that you can actually put your hands and move them in. I want that. Well, that no, that's I'm, that's what I mean. It seems more just kind of like a collector little. Like no, a novelty. this this, yeah. this this was in the the toys, not the collector toys. Okay. This was a this is meant to be for children to play with. To hit each other in the I was face. I say, with. you're gonna punch somebody in the face with a piece of plastic. Like I said, you know? it's rubberized plastic. It's it's. I, I can show it to you. 
when we when we leave here. But I would thing, appreciate that. This yeah, thing is the the biggest. I I would have rather bought Maverick a genuine pile of shit. And, and wrapped it up for him really? to open up. You're a terrible stepfather. I, I am. <laughs> but, you know, I think that would have been a much better gift than this fucking hunk of shit. Mm, too bad you couldn't take it back. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, live and learn. How did Maverick feel about it? He loves it. I mean, he keeps putting it on the wrong hand. But <laughs> that's my only complaint about him with the, the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, I mean, dude, if he likes it. What, I mean, yeah, he likes it. It's cool. No problem. It's yeah. cool. I'm tempted to get him, like, an actual, like, Infinity Glove. I'm not gonna give give it the credit of a gauntlet. My sister, uh, I want the legit my nephew one. A dancing Mickey Mouse. Yeah. That for the longest time he refused to take out of the box. Actually, I still don't know if it's out of the box. Yeah. Because anytime you asked him, he said no, maybe later. And then if you like tried to touch it, he just screamed. Yeah. And it's like you realize if we take it out of the box, it'll dance and do other stuff. <laughs> it'll do more things. Yeah. And he just like no. <laughs> Nah, like bro. this new little fucker, all right? <laughs> Just take it out uh, of the box. Miranda, she, okay, so at LaFeCon, there was something I, I eyed, and I was like, I'm thinking about getting that. And then I went to show Nate, and I was like, oh, it's gone. So I opened up, I op- I, and I knew just looking at the box what it was, not like ex- individually what it was, but I knew what I was getting in the vein. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, this is a fucking Funko Pop. I can tell this is a Funko Pop box. I know I know the size of these things. Open it up. It's the one I saw at LaFeCon. You know what it was? It was Gizmo from Gremlins. And I, I was like, fuck yeah! Nice. I love Gremlins growing up. Oh, man. I did too. There was a bunch of Gremlins stuff at LaFeCon this year. Really? That yeah, was weird. Well, <laughs> LaFeCon before Christmas. Yeah, LaFeCon before Christmas. Are we still having... What what's the status of the actual office? It's still happening. This was just to raise awareness for the next one, which is in April. Okay, they're that, doing it April time. That's what I was getting at. Mm-hmm. So uh, I have spoken with Nate. Okay, and I told him specifically. I was like, "Dude, Lafikon, I don't care if we have to pay for it. I want a booth. I want stickers and shit to hand out to people." I want people to be aware that we are more than just these entities on the stage mm-hmm. talking to people. I want people to like come up to us and be like, hey, what do you do? Not just see us walking around and then talking to people on stage. Right. It'd be cool. I mean, I'm, and I'm willing to sit at a booth all day if that means getting the word out about us. Yeah. So. I'll be down to go to that. Yeah. I was in Chicago when that happened. Well, now you now you're available. Now I live in Lafayette. Lafayette's a lot of fun. Uh, basically, we we uh, host the panels, which typically end up being like mini podcasts, and you know it's just it's just a good time. There's some good people there. We just have a good time. We have we a, good, have a time. good time. One of one of the uh, panels we typically do at Lafayette, Brian K. Morris, he has a show called uh, Clever Title Pending. And that is he has joining. a bunch of shows. He does. Never mind the furthermore. <clears throat> yeah. Well, Brian K. Morris is now a part of the Journey into Comics Network mm-hmm. uh, with a show coming later this year. So that's that's great. Brian K. Morris, he's such a great dude. He's a, he's a very fun person to talk to, and he is he is all about his his philosophy is a rising tide raises ships, raises all ships, mm-hmm. and that's his that's his uh, his business is Rising Tide Productions. And I, I love that philosophy. We all love that philosophy, and we're very happy to have him on board mm-hmm. on the Journey into Comics Network because we not not only is he just a great person to be part of the network. We feel I feel like he, it's going to bring a lot of attention to the network and mm-hmm. more ears, more people. It's going to be great. It's going to be a good time. I'm excited. Me too, and I, I'm excited to have you at LaFeCon this year. And he's Matt. He's I'm Matt. Matt. <laughs> and I'll be at LaFeCon this year. Hell yeah. I mean, we get in for free. I'm going to be dapper as fuck, too. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm the dapper Matt. Not right now because I don't have to work, but I get you. He's not dapper Matt. He's got that I, Pikachu hat, I'm, though. Pikachu I'm, hat I'm homeless, Tyler, today. We're speaking of Pikachu. We've all been playing. We we all have Switches now. Yeah. You and I got a Switch for Christmas. Yep. I just got to say this real fast, so I can't believe you don't like Archer. Really, I don't <laughs> really hurt. Out of the blue, but. When you, when you said that, it was such a like, shit show. Did, I it was just really, like, did it really trigger you? I just. Okay, 
I've um, for two weeks I've literally almost gone through the, all. Hold of on, the I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the list of shows that are really popular that I don't watch because I'm the unpopular opinion guy. Archer, Bob's Burgers, Rick and Morty, uh, Big Mouth. Uh, throw some other ones at me. What's uh, popular stupid TV shows right now? Cartoons, Blaine. Cartoons, throw them at me. I'll tell you, I don't watch really them. stupid cartoons like Archer and Bob's Burgers and Big Mouth. I honestly don't. Big Mouth was hilarious. Nope. Not all of those shows I Big loved. Mouth. Not watching any one of them because they're all dumb. They are dumb. See, I love the first three you mentioned, but I've never even heard of Big Mouth. Big Mouth is great. You know what I'd rather watch than Rick and Morty? Fucking Angry Beavers. Yeah. Same. You know what I'd rather watch than Rick and Morty or Bob's Burgers or fucking Big Mouth? Cat Dog. Yeah, but those are come and gone. These are current. Yeah, but they don't have to be current because they're timeless. So are these eventually? No, you know you want to know what possibly the, you want to know what the most we didn't know you we know didn't think those I'm shows were going to be excited timeless. about about being a parent. One day, my daughter's going to be about five or six years old, and I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to pull her next to me on the couch, and I'm going to say, "Ruby, this is Courage the Cowardly Dog," and then we're going to dive in, and she's going to love it, or she's going to die. <laughs> she hates it. <laughs> then she's gonna I, die. I didn't really like courage because she's not worthy. I wasn't a Cartoon Network guy either, but I was Nickelodeon all the way. Fuck Nickelodeon. You just mentioned Cat Dog and Angry Beavers, which are fucking Nickelodeon yeah, shows. Okay, let me just go through some other ones. I love Doug. Doug uh, was the fucking shit. Okay, uh, <laughs> fucking Dexter's Laboratory. That was a good Classic. show. Classic. I love Powerpuff Girls. Powerpuff Girls. Classic. Sailor Moon was the shit. Yeah, but that's not really Cartoon Network. That's Japan. I just saw it on Disney a lot. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I was also a big fan of Care Bears. I watched Nickelodeon, (laughs) WB, and Fox. Remember the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon? Yeah, we were watching it the other day. It's really bad. Well, I liked it. But one thing I want to ask before we really wrap this up, because I feel like we should... Yeah, I need but to eat food. <laughs> what do you think the fascination in the <clears throat> 90s was with chili dogs? Yeah. Have you guys ever noticed that? Yeah. There was like a shit, done, a shit ton of cartoons in the 90s that was just fascinated with chili dogs. Sonic. Yeah, you're not wrong. Fucking um, Rocket Power. Yeah. Just, I mean, there was like a dozen fucking shows. Speaking of another amazing Nickelodeon it show. It was not amazing. Was I love awful. Rocket Power. It was me. I love yeah, Rocket Power. Yeah, it was Power. awful. Thank you for agreeing with me, Matt. Wow. I, I liked one episode, and it was... I always like felt a, bad for the fat one. The, <laughs> Tito? <laughs> yeah. That's, or no, Squid. Squid. They had like one uh, like little like TV movie. Yeah. So they had to do like... It was kind of like, like a triathlon. They yeah, went to like New, Zealand. New Zealand. That was pretty cool. And then they had an episode where they had Tony Hawk. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. You know what was an awful Nickelodeon show? The Wild Thornberries. I hated that it was okay. you, show. It was awful. It was it was okay. I watched it. I just, I always just wanted to nail the older sister. Debbie. Debbie. I don't even remember these characters. <laughs> Debbie. <names>. Debbie. <laughs> cuz cuz everyone else on that show was really fucking annoying. Yeah. You know what was a really good Nickelodeon show? Ah, uh, Real Monsters. That was a good one. Mm. I, I, that, was I that was one of the first shows I ever watched. You know, was uh, Rocco's Modern Life a Nickelodeon yep. show? That yep. was terrible. Uh, Ren and Stimpy, that was a Nickelodeon show. That was terrible. Um, yeah. I'm think, I Legends, like the, of the, the Legends of the Hidden Temple was cool. I liked, yeah. like the late 90s to early 2000 shows, like the... You know, starting with SpongeBob, then like Jimmy Neutron, and Danny Phantom, Fairly, yeah, Danny ben Phantom, 10. awesome, yeah, Ben early Ben Ten yeah. was pretty fucking cool, yeah. Avatar: The Last Airbender, yeah, Avatar yeah. was cool, Avatar was cool, um, fucking Pokemans, the old Pocket Demons, <laughs> Indigo, that was Nickelodeon, Indigo though. League, that was a Nickelodeon, that was Cartoon Network, no, we're just we're just and talking, WB. that was WB, it wasn't Cartoon Network, it was Cartoon Origi- originally, Network it, originally it wasn't, yeah, originally it was WB. Well, it was on Cartoon Network at the same time. Like, I think they just show reruns. Um, the fucking Ninja Turtle show was cool. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember Evolution? Like the movie Evolution, but they, the TV show, the the TV yeah, cartoon yeah, yeah. series. Yeah. Uh, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. The Men new, in Black. The, yeah, Men in Black. The Men in Black TV show was fucking good. Yeah. There was a uh, Pet Ace Ventura. I don't cartoon. Know yes, there was. Yeah. I All that. that blue. Uh, the tick. There was, was, there was a mask. Show. 
yeah, cartoon yeah, as Batman's well. Cartoon was then good. Freakazoid. The Tick. Oh my god. Freakazoid. Yeah. Jesus. I liked Animaniacs. Yeah. Uh, I was never a fan of Animaniacs. I watched anyway, it all. I um, mentioned a Switch and Pokemon. Hold on. Do you remember the Godzilla <laughs> the fuck animated series? The, the 1998. Ni- yes, Godzilla animated which series. Which was way better than the movie itself. See, I, see okay. You, you sparked this, so I gotta bring it up. I actually liked... I did too. 1998 Godzilla. I did too. You want to know one of the reasons that I it liked 1998 cool. Godzilla? Well, it looked cool. But the baby Godzillas were like velociraptors. Yeah. And at that time, I was really involved in Jurassic Park. Yeah. So then you throw in miniature Godzillas that are actually velociraptors. Given this was a year after the Lost World Jurassic yep, Park. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, fucking chomping on French special forces dudes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'm all about that. So I like that. The fucking, I like that Godzilla movie. A lot, the helicopter actually. chase scene. Come on now. Yeah, that was good. The comic relief in that movie was just Matthew <laughs> Broderick was fantastic. Yeah. in that movie. Matthew Broderick was great. He's fantastic in every movie. Gene, what are you Gene about? Hackman. No, Gene Hackman wasn't in that movie. No. He's Simba, bro. Yeah. <laughs> was he Simba in the original Lion King? In the I know cartoon? he. Yeah. I know he was yeah. in Simba's Pride too. Yeah. He no. He, yeah, he was always and adult one Simba. and a half. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I couldn't remember. He's also Ferris freaking Bueller. Lion King, the greatest ripoff of another successful franchise ever. Maybe Avatar now. <laughs> it's a carbon copy of a German cartoon. Oh yeah, you're with right. A, with oh. a white lion instead of yeah, I remember now. A regular lion. Yeah. So yeah, the Switch. We all got switches. Yeah. And we all got Pokemon. I have my one and only game. It's Pokemon. I have several games, but I have two. That's games, the one I've played the most. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting Starlink in the next couple of days for sure. Yeah, we played it a little bit earlier, and it yeah. was it was a little bit of fun. Yeah. What's wrong with being childish? I like being childish. Before I go, I just want to tell you you were fantastic. Never trust dark. It's just a way to hide your face. That's the exciting thing. There's nobody in the universe can do what we're doing. You're pointing your screwdrivers like that. They're scientific instruments, not water pistols. Jelly Frey. Yes, this must be where I live. This is the season finale of the first season of Gallifradio. We did it. A Whovian podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we celebrated New Year's by watching the New Year's special of Doctor Who. And we're going to talk about it. Resolution. Mm-hmm. It's going to be uh, spoilery, so if you haven't seen it, you probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well said. Uh, Who wants to talk about it first? I guess it's interesting to me to think about this episode because they should not have given us the the, the giveaway for the big bad of the episode. I would have loved to go into that a little yeah. more blind. Yeah, that would have been great. I think that, that, was the, that it was a Dalek centric episode. I feel like that was the one, maybe small. If we're checking points here, that's the first points they get taken off. Was giving it to me in the teaser. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah, you did it in your final episode of this first season here, but maybe it's too little, too late. Mm. I don't know. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked it. I thought it was good. I didn't like the music again. I thought the music was very Hollywood and it was very like forcing me to feel again. And I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to feel. <laughs> we've established our uh, position. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've talked in great detail on this show about our disdain for the current musical choices on this current iteration of yeah, Dr. I'm Hill. not going to apologize. Yeah, that's okay. You don't have to. We are all entitled to our own opinions. <laughs> it was definitely the one thing that took me out of this episode uh, overall was yeah. the fact that there were some spots where that music was not matched up with what was going on or how I think I would have interpreted those moments. Right. But I got to say, I really liked the story. I thought the acting was good. I liked that it focused uh, more on just the doctor and less the ensemble. Like, there was some bullshit uh, that I didn't need, like the whole backstory with the d- Ryan's dad and all that. I mean, I know it's there. Whatever. Yeah. That's fine. Ugh, I, I guess I'm just tired of complaining and nitpicking about it. I want to like it, yeah. guys. I really want to like it. Do you think we're going to have to go back now that we've seen Jodie Whittaker's first complete season and go, let's rewatch it? 
start all over again from the top and 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 go with fresh eye because we know we like her as the doctor there's no question yeah but do we need to there's no continuity there that's making me want to go back and search for things that is true i mean i don't have there wasn't the easter eggs that that normally you go oh that's what oh yeah and then you go back and you see things in a different light I, i i feel like it's been very transparent the whole time so i don't need to go back and see anything else i i just know that i've been there already (laughs) i don't know Mm -hmm. interesting strange i I guess i totally agree and it's not to say that i it's because i don't like it because i do like it i liked this current season overall the whole season was good but it just feels like i'm ready to see what's going to be next because they've established the ensemble they've established the relationships they've established the fuck out of the characters so it's like we get it guys now we can put, let's have some adventures let's put them in high stakes something yeah. that's a little bit more uh, let's make it bring it back, bring it back to doctor who yeah. which is why i liked their attempt with the daleks let me say something cons- uh, i guess it's related to this uh what i did really enjoy and have been enjoying the whole season is that the doctor is a very willing to just take people onto the tardis Yes. Yeah, that's different. And I think that that is uh, a good thing. I think that's an old school kind of idea, you know, just like, ah, just come on board. And they're just like, oh, what? Uh, cool. I guess mm-hmm. I'm on this spaceship. It's- but I liked that there was a whole, like, entourage of people that were just on the TARDIS this time, you know, just like there. Mm-hmm. And they all had a reason. And she was like, okay, everybody's. But, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I, like that I agree. This. That's interesting to note because i was going to say something along those same lines that having them just kind of jump on and it goes back to the way that the doctor i think used to think less considerate of everyone else more about himself or herself i guess as it were like come on the ship i don't care it doesn't affect me that you're on the ship because you're going to leave and have to live your boring life Mm -hmm. and have this awesome memory like Mm -hmm. forever implanted and not you know whatever you know i have i was just thinking about it and i think the reason that you liked that aspect of this episode was because it was really reminiscent to the old Doctor Who classic Who that was like um, unit heavy like where Mm. you members of unit would get pulled in right where it was more of just not just the Doctor and one companion it was a whole crew like Mm -hmm. unit like how uh, you know the Brigadier yeah the Brigadier it wasn't quite such an exclusive club you right. know, I That's mean, even though it, it is, it really but... reminded me of John Pertwee's seasons yeah. as a doctor. I love that you brought up Unit, considering there was a beautiful yeah. tip of mm-hmm. the hat in it the was... episode mm-hmm. to Unit uh, being apparently Brexit has affected <laughs> Unit, <laughs> and they don't have funding now. Yeah, so, it's very um, interesting. Uh, How political? Kate mm-hmm. Stewart is MIA. Mm-hmm. I kind of loved that scene. If we can talk about parts of the thing that wasn't like the main story, that little sub story of her calling and trying to get a hold of Unit and the lady answering the phone and just be like, "How can I help you? Like mm-hmm. one moment, where can I take you or whatever?" Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, it just like it set it apart because it took the serious out of it just for a second. It's like very British. It's something mm. that could really happen though. Like, you call and you're expecting a thing. Very and, bureaucratic. Oh, fuck, <laughs> that thing is not there anymore. What do we do? Mm-hmm. Looks like we're on our own. Uh, Maybe we really should take it back to the start and kind of give them yeah, a little just bit get into the episode. A little just a little bit here and there as we continue to dissect our thoughts and things we liked. But the very start of the episode is essentially ninth century Earth uh dissecting a great enemy in three parts. Chopping this enemy into three parts and hiding it in different parts of the earth. Okay? It got like ones in England, ones in ones on an island, on an island, ones in and Russia. ones in Russia. Yeah, yeah, correct. So they're all supposed to hide their thing underground and like have it buried or whatever and protect it. Question. Sure. Answer. Did anything ever happen to the other I bodies? Was just thinking the same thing. I was wondering about that the whole time. Is yeah. this like? Other bodies. Are there three the other- Daleks, or are there three body parts, or are there... It was three just... parts of the same Dalek and that just temporal one part... shifted together. That's because oh. the ultraviolet light that goes over it oh. activated it. shifted together. Correct. Oh. So they're not still out there. No, that's why oh. the things that were in okay. the bags, you see it like 
quickly disappear and stop moving because of well, that. Well, yeah. Well, that's, that's not what, what I was... saw. I just saw a flash and then they cut yeah, to another too. thing. They and did realized a, that's what happened. I think they did a poor job of that. I mean, uh, I was... a little shady. I, I was, was like little... really focused and like, what the fuck is going on here? But mm-hmm. uh, Yeah, I liked the beginning of it. It felt like I was watching like a, a cool movie. Like, yeah. Like it was yeah. it was good like a, a historical movie. It something. almost like at first I was like are we did I download the wrong thing? Like yeah. is it, are we watching the wrong things as Doctor Who? But yeah, it I liked it. Was. I liked it. I felt like uh once I remembered the, the the like we were watching the beginning I was like what the fuck are we watching? And I was like oh yeah, it's supposed to be Daleks, right? Mm-hmm. And then I was like oh man, that's going to be bitching. So and to know when <laughs> yeah, I think so. I I loved the episode if, if just to break that down, but they cut they like I said they cut it up into three parts and they separated it on the globe. The third guy though that was in Sheffield doesn't make it to like a to place bury to bury and guard his thing, so he just kind of dies and gets mm-hmm. covered up with time. Time Conveniently is, enough. is is the great mm-hmm. enemy. And I love that transition where it was like his body and then they were at the dig site like in a in just a breath. Like yeah, I, I kind of felt like we were watching like a mummy movie and that was yeah, fun. a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I was a history major, so that shit's fun for me. And then we meet Mitch and Liz? Ooh, yeah, I think so. We just well, watched it, guys. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Liz. It was an L name. I'm bad <laughs> I'm with I'm terrible Liz. with names. I think it's Liz. I'll do a little looking up while uh, you guys dive further into them and what happens on the dig. Well, I thought for sure one of them was going to die. Yeah, we were kind of banging yeah. on it. We're like, so which one of them is going to go first or both? Hmm. Yeah. You know. I don't know. Like... Sh- and then as soon as, like, the chick meandered off to search for the missing uh, mm-hmm. Dalek little guy, I was like, yeah, yeah she's definitely in for it. Why did she, she touch wasn't... it? Why did she touch it? For real. If you see some weird, crazy thing on the wall, I'm not touching it. I'm not just reaching my hand out and, uh, like, you know, E.T. phone home, yeah, slow point. Real. I'm not doing that. It's almost as if she no. was asking for it. Correct. <laughs> This is like horror movie logic, you know? Yeah, for real. You don't touch it. Like You see a squid on the wall or in you, a catacomb under a fucking building. You at, don't touch it. Yeah, at least if you're going to touch it, go get the backup that's like, you know, 20, 30 feet behind yeah, you. Yeah, for real. Just you be know? like, hey, I'm going to touch something. Come help me. Or at least cry out, ugh. There's yeah. something. Meh, come and get me. Like, you know, anything. Like I'm pretty sure if I was walking and saw something like that on the wall, my first words out of my mouth would be, uh, holy shit, guys, come right. here now. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, uh, anything. Because like, you're not living in a horror movie. No. Why are people so blind to that? Like, yeah. I guess maybe, maybe in a crisis they're terrible, but I feel like if something like that really happened to us, we would be more prepared than just like, oh, I'm going to be stupid and touch this thing. I have no idea what it's going to do to me. Ah, right. Yeah, that seems like lazy writing to me. I said it. Oh, you did. Sorry. Sorry. You did say lazy writing. Ah, da, 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 well, da, yeah. Da, so this da, creature da. like touches her. Apparently, we're not shown. Right? We were one letter I, uh, off. What? Her name was Lynn. Lynn. L i n. Not L I Z. Sure, sure, sure. Whatever. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> that's how much I care. Okay, so Lynn uh, gets the squid Billy thingy attached to her. <laughs> it was a squid Billy. It was <laughs> yeah. a pretty, pretty rough looking uh, yeah. Dalek. Squidward attaches to her, and she takes it home yeah. unannounced to everybody else. Pretty horrifyingly, though, it like was like a, yeah, was you gross. know turns up a brainstem. Her. Yeah. Oh. Shoots its little tentacle right into you her. You uh, will do as I skull. say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm uh, all for possession. Little story. It's, mm-hmm. it's all right with the yeah. die. I, I like the hybrid story line with the Daleks. There, that was quite. It was a different spin. I mean, how do you come up with something different for the right. Daleks? I mean, the whole. You well, come up with an ancient Dalek that's different than the uh, other Daleks they face, that so that way it creates, you know loopholes for the plot you know i love the idea that they sent different versions of different like ability daleks out because that means you can have other returning foes that have never yet existed correct like i mean Mm -hmm. that that's yeah they set it up pretty well to have something in the future for doctor who with a dalek definitely they always do they always do like she said on the show she's like they always come back like i'm always facing them it's always me it's me versus them every time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's personal. Yeah, I liked that. I liked that it was a good callback to to 
Doctor Who. This one felt more like Doctor Who. It did. And We've been bitching this whole time and it finally <laughs> <No>. yielded. <laughs> Some Someone wrote, as I was looking up the name of Lynn, I saw a uh, sci-fi or somebody had put that that felt more like a finale than the Battle of Ren's Korov Colossus. Yeah, yeah, because it had a different feel. It had like the like the words, the locations that would come up on the screen. Yeah, it you felt know? more like a Christmas special. Yeah. If, yeah. Like a classic Christmas felt special. Felt like it had finality to it mm-hmm. in that way. Yeah, and it also tied up good loose ends. We have more of a story arc on Ryan. Ryan yeah. building his relationship with his father and like that growing again. And I like again. that it didn't leave on a, a cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. I like that it didn't end terribly. It was a happy ending. It's unfortunate that we won't see anything until this time in 2020. Shit, what? for real? Mm-hmm. Correct, no there will Doctor be no Who. more Doctor what? Who this year because, listen, and this is the thing I've been saying a couple episodes across, Chris Chibnall is having a hard time getting the rhythm or the cadence of filming or his ideas are too big or uh-huh. whatever it is down them asking for 10 episodes in a season for him to film in six months is too much for him. And he said, look, give says me who? a y-, says, him? says Chris Chibnall. Mm. And he said, look, give me a year and we'll have something special in 2020. So hopefully he takes his time. He goes back into the old bag of tricks, thinks about characters we know and love, thinks about villains we need to see again. Do you think they would premiere with a Christmas special? Maybe, but maybe a New Year's special. It seems like maybe that's the new tradition. And you know what? Honestly, I'm going to go out there and say it. I liked it so much more that Christmas wasn't attached to this. It made it feel way less cheesy as a whole. I was way more yeah, invested immediately. It was good. Because Christmas was yeah. wiped from it. And it was just, hey, it's a brand new year. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So, I, don't I appreciated know if it's, that. I don't know if it's because Christmas was wiped from it, as you say, but I, I, I think it, it was because it was different. Yeah, it just didn't feel like they were forcing it because right. you had like... The, all these Christmas episodes with the abominable snowmen or crazy Santa Clauses or right. attacking yeah. Christmas trees, like I, I, yeah, it's like force fed that it's Christmas, right? So this is this really. Beautiful... It was nice. They just like kind of alluded to it at the beginning. They're like, yeah, mm-hmm. well, we, which was your favorite fireworks display for New Year's? And they like had been traveling around celebrating different New Year's for, mm-hmm. for however long they'd been doing it. That was nice. Yeah, that was different. I would love to see a, a doctor, not maybe. Jo- Jody, because that'd be hard to do, but I would love to see a doctor pick up his companion like day one, his or her companion day one, and their entire arc take place on day one. It's time for Brews with Dudes. Ah, juicy. So these are uh, three sixth of the beers that we picked up uh recently three of the six is half. it six? one half yes <laughs> um <laughs> three we, we have 50 percent 50 percent of the beers released at 450 north uh this past friday um we got the peanut butter pieces which is a pastry stout with chocolate and peanut butter We've also Pastry got stout with peanut butter cups, peanut flour, and cocoa powder. Yum. Yum. <clears throat> We've also got, I wanted to check, it is a Berliner Weiss, pineapple, peach, and mango. Uh, sounds fantastic. Sounds just glorious. And then we've got the Phoenix Tears, which is a double dry hopped quadruple IPA uh, with, what do we got here? Galaxy, Cryo, Citra... Amarillo and Mosaic. So, um, th- that one is an absolute ass whooper. So, I'm going to go ahead and save that one for last. Save that one for the last one because it's just going to be overbearing upon <laughs> our palate. Like that. Just, That's what it's going to feel it's like. It's just going to. Yeah. <laughs> Double finger banger. All right. Well, let's dive right into this first one. Cheers. Cheers. And to all of you listening and watching. Oh my goodness. That is so good. <laughs> it is. Uh, so oh. very good. This was um, what I have thought a couple times now, and a couple times I drank it, to be one of the best beers they've ever made, I think. It's it's phenomenal. 
peanut oh, buttery goodness. Podfather's already here saying I need a mic. Well, we we tested that this time. I mean, should be a little bit louder on this podcast. Austin needs a mic. Can you hear him now? Do I need to talk louder? Give him more time around the no, mic? I, th- I think he's talking about a previous podcast. Oh. Like the last one I, we did where I didn't have a mic and I was just like talking at this one with you. Uh, I don't have any idea. Um, we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, we'll get it to you. I'm loving, I'm loving the peanut butter smoothness of this one. Mm. It's almost like drinking a peanut butter cup. It is. It's, it's, that's exactly what it is. Liquefied peanut butter cup. It's uh, very smooth. I, I love Easy it. I'm, I'm loving on it. I'm a big fan of it. That was actually uh, quite the trip to 450 that day. We were all feeling pretty rough. Yes, that yes, morning. We were. That was right after uh, drunk catastrophe. The last episode, um, and you know, after we did Brews with Dudes, we did an episode of Drunk Catastrophe. Podcastrophe's, you know, special. Um, we were we were unbelievably lit, drinking till late or late into the night, early into the morning. Early in the morning, I wasn't because I was trying to be responsible about like getting rest and being the because I was driving in the morning. And then Nick's like, no "Get over here, Austin, now. now!" And I couldn't ignore him because he would have just relentlessly called me and texted me until I did come over. So I just folded immediately. <laughs> I get that way sometimes. Um, no shame. Uh, so yeah, then we left at seven in the morning, and it was rough for me at least. I slept a lot until that sweet, sweet beer started hitting your lips down at the uh, mm. brewery. Yeah, it. Uh, this one had a decent bottle share too. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, I think that's. Uh, they had a table set out, and I think it was more encouraged for that's where everybody puts their stuff out to share and taste because. Normally, before the Black Friday big bottle share, like it was just people walking around with bottles and cans to see if people wanted to taste. Yeah, and it was more like, efficient. It was much more efficient. So you had like a main hub, and I actually had brought a bottle of the 2018 Dark Lord to share. Oh man, that was good. It was very good. It it is aging well. I am happy with how it's how it's fleshing out. I still got a couple bottles. Yeah, I still have. I think I've two. given a couple away. We had one the night before too. Did you? Oh, we yeah. had one on drunk catastrophe. Oh wow! Damn, damn. We, we were living, just getting into it. Chris T has joined the fracas. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Podfather has blessed us. Um. This is really oh, yeah. really delicious. Yeah, after I uh, poured our little taster cups at Dark Lord and put the bottle on the table. I turned around 10 minutes later and that thing was gone. Oh, oh, definitely. It was definitely. just, everybody ate it up. It was delicious. Had a, had a couple decent beers there, a couple I really liked, but there's also, I think, two of them that just, they sounded delicious and just they were, were not. They were not. They were not. They were not good. It was, I was just, I was catfished by the label. <laughs> I didn't know beer could catfish you, and then... Oh, it does. Man. It does, and it bites. The, the, the bad part about that catfishing is it's already inside you before you realize it's bad. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh. I'm going to, uh, by the time this airs, for uh, everyone listening to the audio, um, the folks, that they're not going to hear about this until Saturday when I'm already down there, but I'm going to Washington, D.C. this weekend. Um, so I'm gonna try to visit some places I couldn't normally get to. You gonna oh. go? You gonna go check out the White House? I don't know. You know, uh, recreational marijuana is legal in D.C. Is it? Yes. I was not aware of that. Yes, it is. Which makes sense why the politicians are doing stuff that you think they're high doing. Fucking shit. <laughs> Probably because they're blazed. fucking over. They're blazed. <laughs> they're just... Bunch of fucking dickheads. <laughs> the worst stuff. You walk into the Senate and there's a big cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got anything done today? Nope. No. <laughs> no. No. Got two, right, let's two go high. home early. <laughs> I was going to pass that bill and then I got high. 
Fucking assholes. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment, Chris T. You liked the article in JNC. That was pretty exciting. Oh, Miss Starla Hale, welcome. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us. Always a pleasure. The finger guns. We're all about the finger guns. Love me some finger guns. We gotta work on a cool design where we're holding get, holding glasses and finger gunning. I don't know how it would look over a recorder. Maybe something like this. Something just totally unnecessary, ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe we'll get our next uh, cartoon design with the Breeze guys. Cartoonize everybody. Get you jumping and finger gunning. Mm. I don't know. We'll figure something Over out. Over exaggerated features. Always. We are really good at doing that. So, a couple places that I, when I first decided I was going to DC, I started looking around to see, and there's like probably 10 places within a 10 mile radius of where I'm going to be. Um, Aslan is 20 minutes away. What's that? It's a really, really, really good brewery. Um, but I don't know if I want to Uber 20 miles. Might be expensive. 20 minutes or 20 miles? Miles. 30 minutes. Yeah, it'd be a drive. uh, That'd be a (laughs) pretty hefty ride. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Uh, I know my, uh, my mom and my stepdad, uh, Two years ago, last year. Yeah, two years ago, they uh, lost the keys to the car in the previous airport before getting back. Oh, no. So they got back, and they didn't have keys to the car to leave. Aww. And I offered to drive down there and get them. Like, I was going to go to their house, pick up the spare keys, and then drive down there to drop them off. Or just to come get them, whichever one they wanted to do. And they opted to Uber... From the Indy Airport back to Lafayette. Wow! They said it cost them like seventy five dollars. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, you could have just waited. God damn! It wasn't like two in the morning. Like my mom <laughs> called me to wake me up, and I'm like, you didn't even need to like call me if you were because I was immediately like, well, I'm I'm on my way. Yeah. I was like out of bed, had pants on, and like throwing a hoodie on and putting slippers, just ready to go. Like, I even had, like, my truck started and everything, getting ready to just get down there. And they were just like, oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. And I'm like, well, I'm on my way. Yeah, I'm coming. You figured it out. <laughs> yeah, you figured it out. You called me, and here I come. But Yeah, that's silly. They wouldn't let me They wouldn't let me do it. I was like, that would have been, like, way cheaper than Ubering it. Why would you do that? But, but I guess, like, the driver was really cool with it. Like they said, wow. he was like, oh, yeah. I, this isn't the first time I've like long distance drove somebody for Uber, and I'm like, wow. I'll t- I'm gonna check it out because I think it, I've got. I'm I'm gonna be there two hours before Colby, the guy that I'm staying with and hanging out with. So, it, uh, if it's only twenty, if it's twenty bucks to get there and twenty bucks to get back, maybe I'll do it because it, it's it's one of the like when you check Lyft as well because Lyft a lot of times is cheaper. Really? Yes. Okay. Okay. I lifted this New Year's Eve instead of yeah. Ubering because it saved me almost. A little over three bucks a trip for Lyft instead of Uber. Oh, okay. I pulled them up and compared, and I was like, "Nope." Went the Lyft. It was like almost twelve bucks for to Lyft from the Uber from my house to downtown, and it was like it was like eight bucks. Or it was eight bucks for Lyft and about almost twelve bucks for Uber. I'm like, that doesn't no. seem too bad. But yeah, it, it it's felt like least... it felt like Uber up the prices because what year it was, what time of the year it was. Oh, yeah. It's like I'm not, I'm, I don't have to fall for that. I have options. Yeah, we got a couple of people that have joined us. Mr. Drew Luigs, Luigs, Luigi's, Lug, Lug. Miss, uh, why, why do I? I don't need. I don't need to say his last name, but I, I still went for it anyway. Welcome, my friend. And then uh, Miss Lindsey Grable. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Don Richie, everybody, welcome. Everybody. And thank you to everyone that's listening on Podbean or Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you're listening to us, uh, the audio version. Thank you for listening. We appreciate y'all. Um, oh, when this airs, we will be uh, just six days away from our one-year top takeover anniversary down at the North End Pub. Ooh. So we've got uh, we've gotten a hold well, of. That was it. the uh, Ryan Geist one, wasn't it? I think Ryan Geist was the first. Because one. I just got a notification of a memory posting oh, about nice. it. Yeah, we, so we got 450 bringing some special beers. Uh, I think Founders is bringing a special beer or two. 
Oh, that'll be cool. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a banger. It's gonna be a lot of really fun beers. So I'll be I'm gonna laugh if they bring a CBS. Right. <laughs> the cheaper than the ones we fucking bought. Yeah. We're and loaded up on the CBS, or I'm loaded up on you're the CBS. Loaded up with this, <laughs> thanks to our uh, bottle exchange. Yeah, we had a very very successful bottle exchange. Well, Nick and Lou Iggs. Lou Iggs. Lou Iggs. Lou Iggs. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> Thank you for taking it in stride. <laughs> Miss Gabby Madison, welcome. Good to see you, ma'am. Um, mm. That was I good. We, I guess we're slacking. We are slacking. Like, well, we're drinking like eight ounces a piece over here. We're not in a hurry. We're not mm-hmm. in a hurry. Uh, next is the Sunny Paradise, I believe. We might want to uh, give you a quick rinse. Yeah. Go ahead and give these a quick rinse. I'll be right back. Thank you, sir. We've recently started creating content for our uh, brother page, uh, Dungeons with Dudes. That's been fun. Uh, We're working on a dread campaign, which is kind of like D&D, except without all the paper and shit. You've got a a character and... uh, um, you've got characteristics about yourself, and you've got you've got someone kind of coordinating you through an adventure. So we're working on that. We're trying to get some people together for a uh, Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Uh, we've got tons of games between myself and my co-host Dave Linder. Shout out, sweetheart. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've been having a lot of fun with that lately. Um, on top of doing all the stuff with uh, both Breeze with Dudes and the Doom Room and all the six fucking bands that that I'm in because oh, I thought it was seven now I don't know it's a lot it's, it's so a many a lot um, I think the next one that's going to make make moves is huge uh, but they, they it's going to be huge huge uh, huge we uh, we put together a set in 2017 and we haven't played since so that's our political satire band um, I'm excited to get back into that but Mm-hmm. I'm excited to get into this next beer even more. Oh, we got a we Sunny. got a we got a split CD coming out sometime this year. Oh too. yes, we're gonna work on that before too terribly long. Um, the Slayer Mind Blizzard split <laughs> called Brain Freeze. Brain Freeze. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be a banger. Well, that's gonna be good. That's got that's <laughs> gonna be that's that's next after uh, huge huge for me. But I've already got all Mind Blizzard stuff done pretty much. You just probably just gonna salvage two or three songs and then write new material, because the songs that we wrote back then don't you know they're about the people in the you know like we had a song about Steve Bannon and it's like Bannon's been gone for a long time been gone quite a while I don't so, know uh, uh yes Michael you did miss the PB we just smashed through it it was amazing I said it was one of my favorite beers 450's done. This is the new show, Dungeons with Dudes. Dungeons with Dudes. Welcome, Nick Maxson, the host of Dungeons with Dudes. Yes, I'm sitting here with not only the Podfather, but with my co-host. Hey, oh, welcome, Linder. Dave Linder. How we doing, everyone? Welcome, of, welcome officially to the network. I, I'm yeah. excited. But you are be officially part of the family. I love being part of a family. Now you have it's an excuse make to all do more of our shows. Sexual relations that we have a little more awkward, but yeah, only slightly. Only a little bit. Only if you make it weird. We're in Indiana. Um, yes. So Dungeons with Dudes. Uh, we are pretty much the premise of the show is going to be playing games. The end. We're going to play games. That's awesome. And some have board fun games, times. card games. Uh, we're going to get some D and D campaigns going. Um, what what does Mr. Martin want to do? Shadow Run. Shadow Run. Is that it? Oh, that's Shadow old Run. school as shit. Yes. So he, he is he is the master what, of all 80s things. 80s first Shadow edition Run. Shadow Run. Uh, the new, there's a new edition. I think it's like fifth now. I believe that makes sense. But uh, he is the master of all Shadow Run. So we'll have, we have a great time. Wicked. Wicked. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we're gonna you know we haven't exactly obviously this is. Uh, the the first episode more more so like a a, a preview premiere maybe um 
we've got a lot of different fun ideas. You know, we're gonna have a, a like a serialized D and D thing. Um, so one week we might be listening to D and D. The next week we're just play running a game that we haven't played yet. So trying something different. Um, you know, Dungeons with Dudes is a great excuse to bring back something that's classic to the Journey into Comic show. Right. Bringing back holiday bullshit and doing some Cards Against Humanity. Oh, man. Because Ooh. that is the bread and butter. And to get your oh, yeah. guys' crew in on a massive Cards Against Humanity, like... Oh, it would be ridiculous. I'm so down. I'm just saying. That's going to happen. I'm holiday bullshit right for now. the return. Exactly. The We're reboot. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's coming. Okay. So, what are we doing today, guys? I'm so, who else is with us also? We didn't... I don't, did we introduce My everybody? goodness. We got, we got distracted. We, uh, totally we got the lovely Veronica over guests. here. <laughs> and then the not-so-lovely Dr. Dongo. I'm okay. He's, I mean, he's a nice guy. I just wouldn't describe him as lovely. He's she right. is lovely. Right. lovely. Yeah, okay. so... Totally I'm okay. Um, <laughs> he's our... Nick's great, okay? He's just not lovely. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I think he's above I'm average. I'm a little rough around the edges. I'm okay. Well, we All right, so maybe this episode we'll just we'll just make fun of Dick and, sure. and talk about talk about him. So just normal everyday life. It fits with us. my yep. character. Dongo with dudes. Dongo with dudes. Oh my god. Episode title maybe. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm excited to do what we're doing. So what are we doing, guys? So what we are doing it is a game called Dread. It is a role playing game, but other unlike other role playing games where you have dice and like real heavy rules and. You know, elves and dwarves and all that fancy shit. We have a Jenga tower, or knockoff <laughs> Jenga tower. Jenga tower. A janky Jenga it's tower. A, it's actually a jumbling tower. A jumbling tower. Well, that and explains it because it's a piece of garbage. <laughs> it really is. Thank you, Walmart. Oh. Um, <laughs> we have a guest. <laughs> <laughs> we have a guest already. Tom, want to wave at the camera? Wave at the camera, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we've got this janky Jenga. How does this? I can't believe they actually. I've, make I've never this. played this kind of game before. I should probably mention. It's really simple. Uh, so basically, how this will work is: first of all, the game we are playing it is set in 1983 in California, and all of you are teenagers, high school students. Sweet. And uh, your uh, acquaintance, uh, Tad Crenshaw. Ugh. Gross. It's a very gross name. It's super gross. That's um, who picked that name? Who is the star quarterback, the you know number one jock. Everyone wants to be all up in his nuts. Whoa. Uh, some more than others. Interesting that you ordered it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, his family just bought a summer camp. It is uh, Camp Silver Pond, <laughs> which is not Crystal Lake. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I love it. I was wondering. <laughs> and uh, he has invited all of you to uh, into the summer camp to party during the summer before the summer camp officially opens. Sweet. Okay. Debauchery right. awaits. And so the way that the, 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 the essential of the game is there is this Jenga tower, janky Jenga tower, mm -hmm. that whenever I will say whoever is up uh, will pull a block and will set it back down, regular, regular Jenga. And if the tower were to fall something terrible will happen to that character. Maybe death. Maybe worse than death. Severe. Wow, worse than death. Yeah. There are ways. You're going to banish me to an alternate realm while all I can do is stare at my loved ones and they don't know I'm there? Is that the alternate death? Oh, maybe. Dang. Damn. <laughs> That's some savage shit. Yeah. Imagine if if your brain was thrown out into space and, and an alien race found it and they were able they, they want to know what this, this brain is so, so they, they fuck with it thousands and thousands of times and, and they're trying to figure out what's going on in this they're, they're just torturing you for centuries and once they and, and once they, they kill you they just bring you back to life have you ever considered something like that nate i did i have not gone to colorado to try their weed no i have not <laughs> i don't I know have we've seen a lot of doctor that, who. high thc stuff whoa <laughs> like in space being tortured for centuries by aliens it could I be worse know. man you're well, right it could be with dudes Dungeons it with Dudes. I love, I love the title. I love this show concept. I can't wait to get into this game, man. And then uh, there's also a, one more rule. Oh, uh, sure. So if uh, there's a situation that comes where uh, you're allowed to do like an ultimate sacrifice. So if something comes along that, like, say, you know, a monster or whatever atta is attacking you and you want to save your friends, you could purposely knock the tower over. 
Do we have to will... immediately rebuild the tower? Yes. Damn. And when we rebuild the tower, I will have you guys each pull whatever number of blocks we want to, to keep the tension up, basically. Oh. So this tower won't stay a regular tower for long. Wicked. Hell yes. And that's pretty much the game. Okay. Now, if I want... Uh, you you all each made your characters basically, yeah. and basically I wrote six questions down, and I guess I'll read these questions. Sure, now. please do. Uh, first, I'm a little what nervous. I've never played like this before. I'll be right back. Sure, Nick will be right back. Now it's just me. I'm the host. <laughs> How does it feel to be your very own host on your very own show? I love it. Way to host the show, Linda. You're officially the host now. I'm the host. <laughs> the host no the host. longer co. I slightly <laughs> peed my pants. You're doing it. Right. You're doing it. I do you that every day. Comes already. with age. <laughs> it's true. So the first question is, what is your name? It's pretty self-explanatory. What if we don't remember the answers to our questions? I will give you the. I will give it back to you. Oh, wicked. Yeah, I, I just need that so I know. Uh, second question is, what group or click? Would you be in? Basically, you know, there's always cliques in high school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is knows a, that. a 83 cliche wow. after all. Um, Singled out. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I saw you first. That's fine. Right, the third question is, what is your most embarrassing moment that your class can't find out about? Uh, four is, what keeps you up at night? I think I remember my answers. Uh, I and the too. number five is, what makes you happy? And six, we have, how do you know Tad? Have we discovered that Tad is... Tad. Tad. What Fucking an Tad. interesting name. And I will name. give these back to you guys. Sure. And whenever sure. Nick gets back, we can all kind of... Uh, Thank you. If you guys want to go around and introduce yourselves oh. and, you know, kind of mingle with the group. Our, char as ca our characters. Cool. Okay. I am excited. Do we all, like, already know each other in this scenario? Oh, great question. That's up to you guys. Okay. If you if you would like, uh, you all. I assume you all go to the same high school. Okay. Yeah, I'm wondering. Okay, so we're all in the same high school, so we already know each other, or at least know of each other. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's based on however you want to do. Okay. However you want to well, work that. Someone like my awful character probably wouldn't know someone like your character. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. She's not wrong. <laughs> Did you read my? No, but let me tell you what. It's going to be fun when we get into this. Let me. I, I'll tell you what. I'm going to play a side of me that used to exist, kind of. This is going to be. This is going to be fun. I'm like really looking forward to this. Also, I love that it's set in '83. There's something beautiful about that number. Like right now in 1983, guys, just to set the stage, Glenn Danzig is still a member of the Misfits. <laughs> if yes. we're in the summer of '83, it is the summer. October of has not happened yet. He has not quit the band. We're in a momentous time for music. So I'm glad you picked good. up on this. Oh, I did. I, I, I picked I, I up on it. it. Life's good, guys. Life, Life is real good. good. <laughs> and, and Metallica is an awesome band that just started. Have you guys heard Kill 'Em All just yet? Started. It's amazing. <laughs> Wonder what they'll do with their careers. <laughs> Hopefully, they don't burn out and uh, fade away. Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden's been going for several years. Yeah, yes. Iron Maiden's pretty strong, man. They're they're really. Well, they, uh, they just did like Peace of Mind. Yeah, they're roughly around that time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get something to load, but my phone is too slow. The trooper's hot. So I give up on it. Yes. The trooper's hot. So we're a little bit of a standstill here, Mr. Linder. So what we'll do, I guess, we'll kind of, I'll go around with you guys, I guess, and then sure. we can try to bring Nick whenever he Sure, can. that's fine. I'm into yeah. that. Do you want to start, Nathaniel? Sure. So My name is not Nathaniel, ma'am. Do you want to start, stranger? My name's Devin Rogers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. My bad. That's that's all I have. I'm Devin Rogers, and I'm not really happy to be here. Fuck you, guy in the red shirt. Wow. Yeah. Wow there, guy. And also, fuck Tad. I don't know why he invited me to this stupid shit. I'm a little bit confused. Like, I don't know. We're all friends, man. We're here to party, man. But I'm not sure why I'm here, man. Me and Tad have old school beef, bro. Hey man, I thought we squashed that. Here, I can squash. I can squash. If if we need to squash for a night, if you need me to squash for a night, you know I'm what? This year, man, I'm invited to my friend's place. Okay. My parents' place. Okay. You know what? <laughs> for be tonight, cool, man. Just be cool. For tonight, I'm Check gonna it be out. cool. Someone else is here. Wow, that was like right in my facial region. Oh man, <laughs> that's the second Nick oh, Dick I've had near my. That's a whole different story. Nick Dick's the name of the episode. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, awesome. uh, so Nick, this is my name's Devin. How's Devin. it going? Yeah, 
I don't know how the fuck Buster. I'm here. Buster, nice Buster. to meet you. <laughs> we'll, we'll go to Nick then. You want to describe your character to people or your name? Elvis? No, not that. Just like basically what these people. We're just what, doing what introductions we since yeah. we only know of each other. Uh, my name's uh, Buster Spuddington, man. And like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. That's about all I got, man. Right on, I'm just, Buster. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just it's a man. party guy right here. Oh, man. I'm just, I'm just there, man. I'm, Buster's I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it. <laughs> he is the party. I'm in it. I think I'm more excited to be at the party now that Buster's here. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Got the good stuff, man. Hey, guys. My name's, my name's Don't Go Richie. Yeah. 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 I, re- I, I just moved here from Wisconsin, and, oh. uh. Not a lot of people know me, but I'm, I'm glad I can be here with all of you guys. Sounds like it's, it sounds like it's going to be a real hopping time. Take it back, my fuck you to this guy. This guy knows how to party. I like him too. He's a cool oh, guy. I don't. I don't. He's I don't know. All right, man. I don't know cool about guy. that guy. He's pretty okay. I, I I don't party much anymore. <laughs> you don't party anymore. anymore. You're like 16, dog. <laughs> yeah. What are you? 90? I don't want to talk about it. What are you? 97? I don't want to talk about it. Are you 107? He doesn't want to push it. Man. Don't want to talk about it. I'm pushing it because I don't understand. Wisconsin, I thought you got... First of all, Barrel. Harsh in the vibe. It's Wisconsin. Um, we, there, is no, there, is totally no Ian, there is no E in Wisconsin. You're like totally killing my buzz right now. By the way, my name's Heather Thomas. Of course oh. a fucking Heather. <sighs> what the fuck's that supposed to mean? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I have a weird thing against Heather's. There's no movies called Heather's yet. It's I don't true. have it's anything against Heather's. I'm just, I'm a bigger fan of Veronica's. If it, I'm just saying. <laughs> you look like you'd be into Veronica's. Yeah. She makes me happy. Who? My girlfriend, Veronica. What makes you happy, she Veronica? sounds like a I'm bitch. answering the question. You ask the question. With a heart. <laughs> With a heart. With a heart, man. Come on. Okay. Jeez. Welcome, Heather. Thanks. Also with Tad is his best gal, Mary Robbins. I don't know about Mary Robbins. Do I? Do have I met Mary? Do I you guys she know? She does you Coke. Know she does I Coke. Heard she's a big diet Coke head. We've hung out a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> Mary okay. Robbins is part of the, the cheerleading squad. No, Makes so sense. She, she probably knows how to party then. You should probably hang out with her. What's that supposed <laughs> to mean? Not you. What are you inferring? Just you guys. If you like that kind of You guys thing. like to party. I don't. I, I'm just not the guy for that. Not anymore. Okay. I'm just letting you know, like for sure, she likes to party. I'm like I know. I believe <laughs> I know. it. Easy, Buster. All right. So you all mostly know each other. I guess we're acquainted. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tad invites you all to his house. Where you guys will get into his his van, his uh, old school uh, Volkswagen van. Does it have it's a mirror bus, on it? Like the Volkswagen buses, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is it partied out in the back? Does he does he have like the you know the beads between the, the beads. driver's got, seat yeah, yeah, in the yeah. back? The beads, yeah. I love beads. I love beads. Man. I, I love big. the way they feel on my skin. Yeah. Do you ever just yeah. like? Put beads on your carpet and roll on them. Dude, I've done weird things with beads. This guy's a problem. 